we're going to start now and the theme is how to have a joyful and fruitful ministry and how not to carry the burden of the ministry I'm responding to a uh, question a pastor gave me uh, last week to say um, he has tried hard on the ministry and prayed much and there was not much result and how to be joyful in that situation and I think is a um, is an important theme for anyone so I decide to uh, make this the theme of today how to have a joyful and fruitful ministry how to serve God with joy and with fruit that we have good results and not to carry the burden of the ministry not to be burdened uh, so uh, this is the theme of today okay and uh, ho hopefully that would be helpful <coughs> to all of you okay I want to first say that these qualities could block the growth of ministry and could create pressure the love of God should be the motivation now I use an illustration it's like in a marriage now before the marriage when dating generally both persons have much motivation to contact the other person to communicate to try to see the other person that it has much motivation because of the attraction because of the love but after marriage very often something could happen that uh, because uh, one person is not satisfied with the other person one person has demands of the other person and then the other person feels pressure and then uh, the other person begins not to communicate as much that the other person uh, very often is the male who uh, you know when they chase after a woman they usually would be willing to communicate and talk and listen but after marriage uh, very often because of, uh, of the tendency of men not to listen uh, not to have interest in communication then the husband would feel there is pressure because there is a demand to communicate to listen and he feels pressure then the relationship is very much different after marriage because it's under the law now but if the husband and wife both really love each other and are willing to uh, you know to spend time with the other person and appreciate the other person then they will enjoy each other and have the motivation to love each other so when there is no love then the relationship is only pushed by responsibilities and then the wife says you have to clean the house you have to help me you have to listen to me uh, you have to talk to me you tell me what happened to you all this become pressure but if there is strong attraction there is strong love they love each other they care for each other and then they they want to please the other person they want to make the marriage better then they are willing to love each other and care for each other and then the relationship will grow stronger and stronger and so this is a very uh, a very important point in relationship that uh, that is motivated by love by and in a relationship with God is motivated by the love of God and the grace of God then the Christian would say oh God loves me so much he cares about me he blesses me so much I want to respond to him I want to love him and whenever I love him he's very happy with me and he'll bless me that will give people the motivation but if the motivation is always saying now you're saved you have to obey God you have to listen to God you have to pray you have to repent then it becomes all law oriented so uh, I have other teachings that explain the difference between the law oriented life and ministry and grace oriented now grace oriented doesn't mean the person doesn't obey when he's motivated by the grace of God and understand that to obey God will bring blessings then he'll have more more motivation to obey God and and uh, respond to him and to serve him okay and so uh, when put people just emphasize on what people should do rather than on God's grace and good and his good nature 
they don't have and also many Christians don't have the assurance that whether God will help them or not. Many people in ministry they say, God is not listening to my hearing my prayer. He's not responding to my prayer because they want God to respond in His way, and they have no guarantee. For instance, they want more money, and then the money don't come in, and then they think that God is not responding to them. But God has a better plan, you know. He doesn't necessarily give us the money right away. He will have His own time. He, when we trust in Him, He will provide for those who trust Him and obey Him. He will provide for them. So we know that from the Bible, we know that God will for sure respond to our prayers and He will bless us. Then the person have assurance that God is here listening to His prayer and responding to His prayer. And then when people are law oriented, when they face difficulties, they worry. They say, oh, God is not helping me. And they have problem believing that God is gracious. They always just look at what they want. And then they say, God is not gracious to me. So they just tell people to keep on praying or crying to God, hoping that God will help them. So it's like under pressure. We need to pray. We need to repent. We need to do our best so that God will bless us. Actually, we can just say, God is willing to bless us. God is happy to bless us. When we trust in Him, He is very happy to bless us. Okay, and then we should obey, but the motivation should be God's love and grace. So law-oriented ministry is one quality that blocks the growth of ministry and could create pressure. And then two, lack of love and shepherding toward the members does not care about the members and does not shepherd them to build up their relationship with God. So it's just preaching the message and then, and then that's it. Now it doesn't, then it doesn't shepherd them. Shepherd means like a sheep taking care of the, sh uh, uh, I mean a shepherd taking care of the, sh the sheep. Take care of their individual needs. Care about them, help them, respond to the needs, respond to the problems, uh, uh, respond to the weakness and try to help them to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if there is lack of love and shepherding, then uh, the ministry will not grow. And then three, under pressure to produce results in ministry. Always think about the results and pushes people to bring more people to church. Pressure will produce opposite results. Now, In some ministry, sometimes it's the personality of the leader that they just want the church to grow fast and then they are under pressure. When they are under pressure, they keep telling people, you have to bring people in, you have to grow, you have to, to do evangelism, you have to obey God. Then it's always pressure. Then people will lose the motivation because the Bible teaches us that we should rejoice in the Lord. And then the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not just obeying when we have the joy of the Lord the love of God and then we will have the motivation to to obey God and serve God so this is very important that the pastors himself enjoy the presence of God God is so real anytime we pray to him he'll come to bless us anytime we love him Lord Jesus I love you I thank you Lord hallelujah you're blessing us all the time when we love God all the time then we have strength and then we'll have the motivation to serve God. Then we'll tell people, God loves you, God wants to bless you, and the, uh, he, you are precious in His sight, and He has a wonderful plan in your life when you trust in Him and obey Him and serve Him. He'll bless your whole life. So do you want to be blessed by God? Do you want to have a close relationship with Him? When we trust in Him and love Him and obey Him, then the relationship will become stronger and stronger. It's not hard to have a good relationship with God because God is happy with anything we do according to His will. When we repent, when we love Him, when we obey Him, God is very happy to respond to us. So we should not use pressure to push people to change. If we use pressure, we tell people you have to repent, you have to obey, then it becomes pressure to people and becomes law oriented and the people will say it's so heavy it's so much work now I served, a, I served God 
from morning to night. I spend all my time in praying, in serving God. Now I spend time in doing other necessary things, eating and spending time with my wife and also time of exercise to keep myself strong. But when I serve God, I don't feel pressure. I enjoy serving God because God is full of love. So I, when I think of God, I like Him and I like serving Him and I like to bless people. I like to help people to enjoy God. So I serve God with much motivation. So I hope that we all will be motivated by God's love and not under pressure to serve God. And then D, controlling or pushing toward the members. So it's now the number three is under pressure to produce results like uh, under pressure to bring in more money to the ministry, then uh, pushing the people to, to give more offering. Um, now, when we motivate people to <clears throat> give offering, it should not be pressure. We tell them that God knows how you give and your heart to give. When you give, God is very happy with you. <clears throat> and He'll bless you. So then we, we teach people to, <clears throat> to trust in God <clears throat> and give offering. Now when the ministry is very, very weak or at the beginning stage, it's not wrong for a pastor to seek another job to support himself. Even Paul, he was a tent maker, so he could you know, make money with tent making and then he support himself. Also, of course, some Christians support him, but he did not, he probably did not have the support all the time. So he was also a tent maker. So it should not, the minister should not be under pressure. If there is financial problem, then a pastor could look for a job to support himself. And then uh, for controlling or pushing toward the members. Now in 1 Peter 5, 2, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. So when we serve God as shepherd to the flock, we shepherd them, serving as overseers, not by compulsion. We ourselves serves God not by compulsion, not by pressure, but willingly. We serve God willingly and uh, not for dishonest gain, not for money, but eagerly. And it's right for pastors to receive salary. But if the church doesn't have money yet, then he could find other ways to find support for himself. Maybe he has to work for a while. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to him, that he is not lords. He doesn't control the people. Now, it's right for the members to submit. Members should submit to the leaders, but the leaders should not be controlling, but should have mutual submission. Now, Ephesians 5.21, uh, in, the, in this passage, it talks about the wife should submit to the husband. But before that, in, now in 5.22, that Paul said, you know, wife, submit to your husband. But in 5.21, it says, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. So the husband and wife sh should submit to one another. As pastors too, we don't just, we are not the Lord of the church. We should also submit to the members and listen to them, listen to the needs, respond to the needs, and respond to them, care about them, and submit to them, to their needs and then care about them, but train them to obey the pastor also. But not absolutely. What I mean is, when the pastor is wrong, the people should not be submitting to him. When the pastor is not following God's way, the people should examine the teaching of the pastor. The Bible doesn't teach absolute uh, surrender, submission to the pastor. The submission should be reasonable when a pastor is following God. And it should be reasonable in a sense. The pastor should not be forcing the people to, you know, uh, like to spend all the time in the church, to push the members to give all the money to the church, uh, things like that. Now, this is the practice of many cults. 
that they will force the people to give all the money and give all the time and even to live in a church to give the whole life to the church. Now, this is not in the Bible. It says that do not, do not lord over them because when that happens, then the people will rebel and then uh, the church could break up and then there could be more problem in the church. Okay. Now here I want to explain the difference between God's law and God's grace so that we understand we are motivated by God's grace to obey God's law and then, then the church will have stronger motivation. The law of God tells us what to do. God's grace tells us what God has done to bless us, what God has done already. He, Jesus died for us. Jesus uh, uh, died for us to give us eternal life. And the Holy Spirit moves in our heart to guide us to obey Him, and He treasures what we do, what we do for Him, and He remembers and He rewards us. So all these are God's grace, and then God's law tells us God's judgment and punishment, and God's grace tells us God's forgiveness and help, and God's law mo is motivate us by punishment. The pun the motivation is by punishment or by following the rule. And God's grace motivates us by grace and love, that we are motivated because God loves us so much and He, he will remember everything we do for Him and He will treasure that and He will reward us. And then God's law should not be the main motivation. If that's the mo main motivation, that the, then the Christians will be always under pressure and they fear uh, uh, the, uh, the judgment of God. They fear the you know, overseeing of God and the pastor, and it's all under pressure. And uh, it should be, you know, God's grace should be the main motivation, that we are motivated to love God by God's grace. Some people say, if people are just motivated by God's grace, then they don't want to obey God. Then we'll ask them, do you want God to bless you? And we also, I, I want to say that, we do have the motivation from, from God's law, but it's not the main motivation. There should be a motivation telling them that when they disobey God, there's always destruction. When we follow the flesh, there's always destruction. So uh, uh, we should not sin. We should not fall into sin because sins will give the devil a foothold. But that should not be our main, main motivation. The main motivation should be God is full of grace and mercy. God is loving us. God is blessing us. So I want to obey God and love God and serve God. That should be the main motivation. But there should be a reminder that when we disobey God, there is a punishment. There could be punishment or destruction. So we don't want to sin. But the main motivation is God is full of grace and mercy and He loves us all the time and He treasures everything we do. He appreciates everything we do. So I'm happy to, to serve Him. Now, when a person is motivated by the law, then he's filled with guilt. When a person is motivated by grace, he's filled with forgiveness and love. He's saying, God loves me and forgives me. I'm blessed by God. And motivated by law will be under pressure. And motivated by grace will be no pressure. It's uh, God loves me so much, I'm willing to serve God. I serve God from morning to night. I have no pressure. I enjoy it. And motivated by law will bring a sense of failure because then because the measurement is that anything you fail to do is a sin. That's true. But when we are motivated by, by the grace of God, then we say when we repent, then God will forgive us. And then we don't have to worry about the sin. We repent and then we turn away from the sins and obey God. And God is very happy and the whole heaven rejoices over us. And motivated by grace, there is a sense of accomplishment. That means anything we do, God remembers us and God uh, rewards us. So then we have a sense of accomplishment. Every little thing we do. For instance, Jesus said, when you give a cup of water, be, you know, because the, uh, the person belongs to Christ already, you will not lose your reward. So the uh, motivation by grace we, we say anything you do for God, God is very happy. And then when we're motivated by God to do little things, we want to do more because God will remember and our life to, will be lifted up to a high level. So when people don't want to obey, then we can first we, we 
uh, you know, we tell them about God's grace and God's love and your life is precious, do you want to be blessed by God? And we can also tell them when you disobey God, God, there will be bad consequences, there will be destruction. You can give the devil a foothold and that's why you're suffering so much. So do you want to enjoy life or to suffer? People think that when they pursue the world, then they will enjoy. Actually, no. When we pursue God, then we'll enjoy God and everything He provides for us. He will provide for us. And then motivated by the law, would like to compare. Uh, have I done enough or uh, I have done more than the other person? So it's a lot of comparison and criticism and say, I did not do enough or the other person hasn't done enough. And then motivation by grace would praise other people and say, wow, he has done so much. I thank God for that. When he has done more than what I've done, I'm happy for him. I praise God for him instead of being jealous. And then motivated by law would want to uh, compete. But motivated by grace would want to help, help each other. And he is doing well, I want to help him. When we help him, we also will re be rewarded for our help for him. Critical, uh, motivated by law is critical of oneself and others. And motivated by grace would see the goodness of self and others. Okay, so the, what causes people to have pressure is motivated by law and pushing people to, to obey uh, uh, motivated by the law. We should motivate people with God's grace and love. Okay, and then the next point very important is filled with appreciation of God's nature. When we appreciate God's nature, His love, His wisdom, His power, His Almighty power, His care for us, His acceptance for us. When we understand His nature, then we will have stronger motivation to obey Him. Then we want to, uh, we would like God more, we will delight in God, and we want to serve God more. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.4 By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, that we can be partakers of divine nature, the nature of God, His love, His care for people, His acceptance of people, His uh, uh, forgiveness of people, and His willingness to help people. So then we have uh, the divine nature dwelling in us, and having escaped the corruption that is in the world, that we will escape the sins. And so what kind of uh, God's nature that we can have? God's love, care, and acceptance. That we accept that from God and also we will live out love and care and acceptance to people. God's holiness and justice. He is very holy and, and just. And we can uh, live out that holiness and justice. And then God appreciates and lifts up people. God appreciates people and lifts up people. He will raise people up to a higher level. And God's wisdom, power, and plan. God has uh, wisdom to do everything. He has the power to do everything. And He has a wonderful plan. And God works in all things, things for our good. Everything God does is for our good. So God is very gracious. We want to enjoy God's nature and live out God's nature. That would be like God to care about people, love people, accept people and live a holy life and appreciate people and raise up people's life and have the wisdom of God and the power of God through faith and also follow God's plan. And, and then also we believe that God works in all things, that God in all things for our good. Okay, now, just now we talk about serving God under the pressure of the law. And now I want to talk about serving God with God's perspective. From God's perspective, looking at things from God's perspective, serving God from God's perspective. Uh, so this is more biblical, to follow God's way, 
uh, to follow the biblical way. First, the Bible has promised us that God has a wonderful plan in His people. Psalm 139, 16 to 17. All the days planned for us have been written in your book. All the uh, days fashioned for us has been written in God's book. And His church. Because God, if God plans, has planned for His Christians, then the Christians together will be the church and God also has a plan for the group of Christians, the church. If God has a plan for each individual Christians, He will also have the plan for the whole, whole church. And also Matthew 16, 18 says, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So that Jesus will build His church, that the darkness, the, hate, the gates of of hell shall not prevail against the church. The church will have victory. And Matthew 13, 31 to 32, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. So the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that, you know, it will grow from a seed to become a large tree. The church, the whole church will become a large tree. It will be, there will be continual, continual growth. Because God's plan is to bless the church. Okay, so the first point is that God has a plan for each individual and also for each church. But then the church needs to follow God in order to enter God's plan. Okay, and then God promised blessings to all who love and obey Him. God has promised us the blessings. Matthew 6.33 but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So when individuals and also the church will seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things, when we seek His kingdom, means we want more people to enter the kingdom of heaven. We want more people to believe in Jesus. And also, uh, we want God to take over our life. When He takes over our heart, then our heart, is the dwelling place of God's kingdom. When we ask God to take over a church, then the church becomes the, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will come into the church. So it has two meanings. Seek the kingdom of God means to seek God's, uh, to seek salvation of more people. And secondly, to let God be the king of our heart and of the church and of our family. And then His righteousness Seek His righteousness means to obey Him, to follow His righteousness. All these things shall be, shall be added to us. So when we follow God, He will take care of us. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So, and Christians who love God do experience God helping them. So, so we all can experience this. So will the church. The church will also experience help. That first we believe that God has a wonderful plan in the church. When we obey God, when we offer, when the whole church offer the body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, then we will enter, start to discern the wonderful, good and perfect will of God. And then when we follow the perfect will of God, God will bless us and provide for us. God does not necessarily respond to our prayers in our life, in our way, but God always has the best way. Sometimes God lets us go through difficult times so that we learn to rely on Him totally, and this is all for our benefits. Now, many people, they, they worry. They say, oh, I pray and I don't get the results. They say, I want the money now. I want to get married now. I want the church to grow very fast now. And they don't come right away. It doesn't mean God is not responding. It just means God has this, you know, better plan. And now there are two, uh, two answers to that. First, 
there are some people who don't obey God. Then they don't fall, they don't, they don't enter the perfect plan of God. When they don't obey God, when they let sin control their lives, when they have anger, frustration, when they don't have a good family, when they don't care about the, the spouse, when they don't care about the, the, the people of the church, the members, then they are sinning and then they are not letting God uh, bless the church. Then what he prayed for will not come true. God will not bless the church when the church is not controlled by a church, when the church is not guided by, I mean, I'm sorry, and when the church is not guided by God, when, when God is not the Lord of the church, then God will not bless the church. When the church is only controlled by people, in people's way, that's one answer to why there are people who at once the church to grow and it doesn't grow because they don't follow God's way. And the second reason is sometimes, you know, there's a time of learning, a time that we learn to rely on God, a difficult time that we learn to rely on God. And then with time, eventually the growth will come when we trust in Him and obey Him. So God doesn't necessarily uh, follow our prayer, but He has a better plan. And we don't have to worry about God's plan because He always gives us the best. And then, four, the more we see the goodness of God and delight in Him and tell people how good God is, the more He will bless us. So serving God is very important. We are serving God. We are not just telling people to obey. Following God is not just obedience. It's delighting God. When we delight in God, then we'll want to obey Him. So the more we see the goodness of God, He, he works in my heart, He guides me, he, he, the Holy Spirit gives me love and joy and peace and take away my burdens and heal my soul. And I thank God. God is so good. God is so good. God is full of love. God is full of blessings. When we delight in God, then He shall give you the desires of your heart. That He will respond to our prayers. And then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. So when we delight in the Lord, He will cause us to go high in the world, that we will become great and important people to influence the world. So serving God with God's perspective is to see the goodness of God and delight in Him and say, God, you're so wonderful. I like you. I like you. I like you. The more we like God, the more we'll be strengthened by God. So I hope we all like God instead of being pushed by the law. We like God and we want to help the people to like God. And then they will be motivated by the grace of God. When we believe in God's goodness, we'll also have less burdens. And we'll be able to rejoice in God's goodness. We'll see, wow, God is working in these people. God is changing these people's heart. And God is changing my heart. God is working my heart. So we rejoice. We say, we count the blessings of God. God is so good. God is so good. God is doing wonderful things wonderful things, then we can rejoice and we have less burdens. Then our lives will show the peace and love of God more and we'll be able to have better relationship with people and can bring more peace and joy to people and our ministries will become stronger. So when we enjoy God more, we have less burdens. When we enjoy God and His love, we have our life will show the love of God, will show the joy of the Lord. And then people will be attracted to us. And then they want to follow God. They want to, they, they say, I want your God. So our ministry will become stronger. Our ministries will become stronger, not by the law, but by the grace of God, by the love of God, by the work of the Holy Spirit to change people. Okay, and God wants to accomplish His will to bless more people. So if we always look at things from God's perspective, and appreciate His wonderful work, and want to follow His perfect will, God will be pleased with us and bless our lives and ministries. So God has a wonderful plan. He wants to accomplish His will to bless more people. In, uh, in the history of mankind, you know, it's a t timeline. In, his, in this timeline, God wants to bless more people, to save more people, to strengthen their spiritual life. To, 
show the glory of God so people will follow God. That is what God wants to do. God wants to show His glory through His people. It's very important that we understand this. Our lives is to show the glory of God, to show the joy of the Lord, the love of God, the freedom of God. And it's not just the law. The Bible is not just obedience. Part of it is obedience. The Bible is about God's nature. God Himself, His nature and His work, His grace. So the more, you know, God wants to accomplish His will to bless more people. So when we, when we look at things from God's perspective and appreciate His wonderful work, God is wonderful. He saves us. He works in our heart. He changed our life. And then we want to follow His perfect will. We want to obey Him. We want to bring more people to enjoy God. Then God will be pleased with us and bless our lives and ministry. So when we follow ministry, we, we do ministry God's way, then God will be happy with us and He'll bless our life. Even when we might have difficult times, our whole lives will be fruitful. Even when we are difficult, when there is persecution, still there will be, uh, will, our lives will be fruitful. God will make sure that we have enough resources and wisdom to accomplish His perfect will. When we love God and delight in God and glorify God and follow God's way, God really treasure us. And then He will make sure that we have enough resource and wisdom to accomplish His will. So I thank God that God has this heart to bless the churches I'm blessing right now. I'm very happy to do that. And in order to do that, God blesses me with the provision. But first, God molded my life. Through years, for years, He molded my life. He changed my life to, be, to appreciate God. He gave me this teaching to appreciate God, that I like God, I enjoy God, and I can experience His presence any moment when I appreciate Him, when I like Him. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And I want to take care of my problems in my life. First, I enjoy my relationship with God. And then I take care of my sins, my relationship, uh, relational problem, how not to be affected by people, and take care of negative thinking and emotions, any kind of problem in my life I want to take care. And then God give me, gives me more and more good teachings and I want to share with people. And then finally God opened the way through Global Fire Missions Ministries that we can provide for so many places uh, to be able to watch my training, to that we have uh, help a number of places to buy the equipment so that they can watch my training and this is to ac accomplish God's will. So I hope you all have this heart that you want to follow God's heart and follow God's timing and then your life will become better and better. Your life will become stronger and stronger. Okay, now we look at Bible verses that tell us God's promises and tell us what to do to receive the promised blessings. So God has given us many promises. When we understand these blessings, these promises, then we know how to receive these blessings. So in these verses, first we have the promises, but it also tells us what to do, how we obey God in order to receive these blessings. So the motivation is the blessings of God, the grace of God for us to obey and then God will bless us. 